Hi, my name is Alex Cate and I'm just a guy cooking. So today's episode, we've got something really fun for you, but before we get to that, I want to respond to one of our very first fan letters, at least that's what I'm calling it. It's actually a friend of Dean's out in Missouri. Her name's Faye from Andy Faye's Yesterdays, and she wrote us some really, really nice comments, and Faye, I just want to address them to you. So, um, first of all, um, I'm glad, apparently, that the law makes you feed your children. Um, <laughs> I'm just sort of making jokes. Faye will get it, everyone. So, um, anyway, um, thank you very much. She said very nice things about my personality and my looks and everything like that. Um, uh, I'm wearing a blue shirt just for you, a bright blue tone shirt just for you, Faye. So, um, that's pretty good. Got that check, check, check. Oh, yes. Faye, let's not talk about my crotch anymore. My mother watches this show. No, seriously. Faye said the table's a little low, but you know, I'm just a guy cooking and this is what I've got. So my suggestion is to share all of these videos with your friends. We get up to a million hits on all of them and then I can buy and build a, a, a taller counter. A real studio. A real studio. So that's the goal. Share, like, um, Subscribe, yes, all that stuff to our channel, subscribe. and eventually I will be able to what build a higher counter. So anyway, so that's the goal. Now there's another choice. I can wear an apron. So, uh, but that's not fun. Subscribe. <laughs> Actually, that could be a little game that we play. If you want to see the crotch, go onto my Facebook page, Just a Guy Cooking, and say yes to the crotch. If you don't want to see a crotch, go to my Facebook page. And say wear an apron, and whoever, whatever more, the most votes we have, that's what I'll do. So um, thank you, Faye, for that comment. Not that Faye said it was a bad thing; she just was mentioning it. So um, anyway, uh, I do want to talk about one thing that Faye wrote. Faye said, "If you want women to watch, measure the ingredients seriously. Most women who cook are also very budget conscious, and some juggle job, household." They are not going to invest time, money, and energy in a dinner that can be ruined because of over under use of spices or other ingredients. So I just want to address this. The way I cook is very creative, and it just I just sort of throw things together. So I don't really know the measurements, but I will try to incorporate what I think the measurements might be. Here's my suggestion. Always go a little bit under the first time you cook something. You're not going to ruin it. It's going to be fine. If you taste and taste it along the way. If you're tasting along the way, Especially if you're making a sauce or something like that, you can always add a little more. Now, with the meatloaf I made on the last episode, you can't really add once it's cooked. But if it tastes just a little bit bland, you could take um, some like kosher salt and just use it as a little bit of garnish, and that will pop all of the flavors. So I will try and help you out with that a little bit, but honestly, I just don't use them. So my thought is take a chance. Quit worrying about measurements. Quit worrying about rules. Get excited about something and just fake it. <laughs> so, um, and everything else was pretty good, it was very nice of what you had to say. So, um, oh, the other suggestion that she made is about writing down the recipes. So what we'll start doing um, in the next few days is I will work up a written recipe and I will do some estimates with measurements just to help you guys out um, as you get more comfortable with experimenting on your own. And we'll post them on our Facebook page, Just a Guy Cooking, uh, like it on Facebook, please, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. And, uh, and then what I will do is I will post um, uh, the recipes as I have them written out. Also, you can write to us at justaguycooking at planetmail.com. Um, if you write us, leave comments about the show, I'll address them to you as well uh, during one of our future episodes. And uh, I can also send you recipes through our email as well. So let's get to cooking. We do read the comments. We do read the comments. Oh, yes. absolutely. And I'll Facebook respond to and YouTube. Yes, Facebook, YouTube. And I will actually comment on there. But if you have any questions, maybe there's something that you have been curious about cooking, but you've never wanted to try it on your own, make me do it. I'd be happy to. So um, with that being said, you know, get in touch with us. Oh, we also have a Twitter account. I just forgot. We have a Twitter account. Twat it is twat. <laughs> no. We just got past my crotch, and now you're going to say twat us? Tweet us. It's tweet, Dean. <laughs> okay, this is a PG-13 episode. I knew it was going to happen. But anyway, um, it's Alex underscore J-A-G-C, just a guy cooking. All lower caps. 
So at Alex underscore J-A-G-C. And I'm sure somewhere across this we will do some special effect <laughs> putting all that information on there. That's Dean's job. <laughs> so let me put the phone down. Done. Don't worry about the sound, it's a really sturdy phone. Uh, I would tell you what it is, but they have not partnered with me, so I'm not going to advertise for them yet. Anyway, let's get to cooking. Today we are going to make, you've heard of pigs in a blanket? Well, this is more of a pig blanket, or what we're going to call stuffed prosciutto, or we're going to call it prosciutto wraps, I haven't decided. You can help me decide what to call it, if you would like. Just comment, eh, well, you know, you heard all that stuff. Now, I'm also going to tell you, for those moms on a budget, this is not a budget meal. It's more of an appetizer. We're going to prepare it and then we're going to garnish it in a couple different ways to give you a couple different ideas. Um, this is not a cheap meal that we're making, so or a cheap snack, but it's a great appetizer for parties. Uh, spring is coming. You're going to be going to wedding showers and baby showers and all that stuff. It's a nice, fun, tasty, fancy looking thing that's really, really, really easy to make. All right. So what you do is you go get some prosciutto. And I've got goat cheese, crumbled goat cheese. No, not, don't do any, yeah, you can't do it, but I don't do anything that's already been flavored for me. I like to do my own flavoring. And dates. So we have prosciutto, goat cheese, and dates. And now the prosciutto, you want to be careful with, it's very delicate. And um, so you want to be careful with it as, as you're working with it because it can tear pretty easily. So, oh my God, it already smells so good. Uh, the hardest thing about doing anything with pork, like prosciutto or bacon, is actually getting it made before I eat it. <laughs> so this is pre-cooked? It's salt cured. It's not smoked. So, yeah, you could eat it right out of the package. Okay. So, so what we're going to do, and don't worry, it's, you know, don't worry, it's, it's torn. Do you see that? See how it's sort of torn there? Like that? When we cook it it's going to all meld and melt together and become one piece. It's really, I did this on a whim once and I was amazed at how it actually cooked. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting started, I'm putting the broiler on low. So, then you take one date, you stick it right at an end here. Very good, very good. Forgot to hit start, my oven was yelling at me. So you've got, okay, Faye, so it's one slice of prosciutto, <laughs> one date. Now you're sounding bitter. Oh, it's <laughs> not bitter, it's just funny. No, I'll let it go. <laughs> and you want just a little pinch of goat cheese, not very much at all. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to wrap this up. I think I like prosciutto wraps better than stuffed prosciutto. That's what I think I'm going to call these prosciutto wraps. And then you just place it on a cookie sheet, just like that. Oh. Okay? Yes. So I'm going to put this in front here. Once again, you just get yourself one slice of prosciutto and a date and cheese. And for those of you who have kids, if you're having a little party, this is also a fun thing you can do with kids. You know, um, because they can do this stuff. Anything, anything using your hands like this is fun. And if you want it to go a little bit less expensive, maybe a less expensive sna uh, snack, you could use uh, regular luncheon meat, like smoked ham. You could use um, turkey meat. Bologna. Bologna. Any of that? <laughs> any of that. Bologna. <laughs> it's elevating the fried bologna sandwich, which I loved when I was a kid. Oh, my goodness. I haven't had one of those in a long time. Maybe I'll have to make that next time. But, um, right up there with fried egg. Right up there with fried egg. Actually, one of the other things that Faye mentioned was she wants to see some soup. So, Faye, next time, next episode, we are actually going to make some soup for you. So, mm -hmm. I know. So, anyway, so we're going to wrap all of these up. We're going to put them on a cookie sheet. And then we're going to broil them. And you know what? I've only made this a couple times. I'm not sure. We'll figure out the time as we do this. Um, I think it's about 15 minutes. You're going to want them to be crispy. And uh, that's why we're doing it on broil. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes. So anyway, like I was saying, you can use lunch meat. You can use any kind of deli meat. Uh, the flavor, this is a much richer flavor, you know. But if you wanted to do the same kind of thing with, say, uh, 
uh, smoked ham lunch meat and some cheddar cheese. Um, you could do that and stuff it and roll it. It's fun. So I'm going to finish doing this prosciutto, stuff these, and uh, we'll be back shortly. Okay, we've got one more to wrap. And boy, are my fingers tired. Yuck, 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 yuck. So anyway, so there we go. We've got a whole bunch of little, little pig blankets, prosciutto wraps, one date, and a little pinch of goat cheese in each one. We're going to put it in the oven on a low broil for about 15 minutes. I'm going to set the timer for 10 so I can check it and just keep adding time. There it goes. There we go. And I forgot I made myself some hot water and honey while we were on a little break. <laughs> I'll set this over here. Alright, so now we're going to prepare this a couple different ways. Now because this is an appetizer and when they come out you'll see that they've, the fat in the prosciutto has sort of melted around the date and the goat cheese. So it makes it really great little finger food. It's great to put on a, uh, on a plate with maybe some greens just to dress it up a little bit uh, and serve as just an appetizer at a party. But we're going to get a little bit fancier with it and do it as a side dish. Um, I'm going to do it a couple ways. Uh, one way I've never tried before, but we're going to try today see how it works. And the other way is, uh, is with a salad. We're going to make a unique dressing with it. So what I'm going to do with the salad is I'm gonna do some, I use a lot of spinach. Um, you'll notice the past three episodes I think I've used spinach. Uh, just because it, it's economical. I get this ready washed uh, spinach at the grocery store. It's easy. It doesn't go bad like lettuce, the, the regular lettuce does. It's just, and I, like let, I like spinach. So, what I'm going to do is I usually grab a, a handful of spinach for each person, you know, so that, that I'm serving. Um, that's how I do it. So, you figure a cup of, half a cup to a cup of spinach per person. So, what I'm going to do, and we're going to make a chopped salad. So, I'm just going to chop this up. And with this salad, uh, I'm just making pretty much what I had uh, lying around. I try and have fresh vegetables of some kind around the house all the time. And once again, I'm just a guy cooking, so it doesn't have to be perfect cuts or anything. I just prefer it chopped. I don't know, I prefer a chopped salad. If you wanted to leave it whole, you could. So that's my serving, and here's Dean's serving. <laughs> so how about that Lady Gaga on the Oscars, Dean? Did you see her? Yes. When she did the Sound of Music medley? It was, it was amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, I've loved Lady Gaga ever since she started, and uh, ooh, there's some Lady Gaga haters out there. Calling her unoriginal, and stealing from Madonna and all that stuff and I don't know there was something about her I just thought no nah, I think she's really talented <laughs> I think she she's does just, have a voice yeah for sure I, I think she's just smart you know I think she's just smart and uh, then she a few years later she pops that out on the Oscars shuts everybody down and now she's going to be on next season's American Horror Story one of my favorite favorite shows I cannot wait so, I'm just going to toss a bunch of different things. Like I said, you can use whatever you want. So, uh, I've got some chopped scallions here. You should leave the bowl. Oh, thank you. I got some green onions. Oh, we have a visitor. Somebody came to visit. Hi, Bona. There's a cat running across the floor. But not in the food. No, 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 not in the food. Well, it's not a restaurant. <laughs> No, I, I try not to serve animal hair, which is a little <laughs> tricky sometimes because we got a lot of animals around. Fur bone. Bone is about 18 years old. And can you get a shot of her? She's looking so cute. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be difficult? Yes. Okay, never mind. <laughs> People are going to wonder, I wanted to see the cat, but no, you don't, no scene of the cat. There's, so. there's a plethora of cute cat videos. But, but not Bono, right? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, she's 18 years old and she's beautiful and she's so much fun. This piece of celery is kind of funky, so I'm going to go for that. And, uh, 
She loves pork. She loves bacon. So as soon as I put that prosciutto in, she came in from out into the oven. She came in from outside begging. So maybe we'll get to here if she really starts going on. But anyway, so back to Lady Gaga. She's going to be on my absolutely favorite, one of my favorite TV shows, uh, American Horror Story next season. American Horror Story Hotel. I'm very excited to see what that's going to be about. The only thing that I have to comment about, and this is only because I used to live with the drag queen, is I didn't like the wig. It looked like a wig. And I thought, if she's doing that, if she's going all out with that whole thing, it would have looked nicer to have something more natural looking. Well, yeah, but isn't part of her charm, and I agree with you, it was kind of a big old piece of hair slapped on the side of her head, but isn't part of her charm, a, there's a little bit of that low rent look to her, I mean, kind of. <laughs> not, not always, I'm assuming she was trying to go, not go low rent for that piece. I don't mean that in a bad way, I don't mean low rent in a bad way, I'm just saying. You know. Let's see. This is the fun part. This and, and you should have known, because you, you what did you tell me about RuPaul? You watched the entire season, six, season six yesterday. Well, yeah, duh. The <laughs> season premiere was last night, season seven. So, and like with my cute covers and stuff, I was just like, oh, I'm just cutting and talking and talking and cutting. So if it's a little big, you know, go back and recut it a little bit. So, so I've got some celery, I've got some green onion, i got some cucumber. Oh, carrot. Let's do something fun with the carrot, just to give it a little di different texture and a little different look. And I'm going to just grate the carrot, or peel the carrot, right into the salad. So, well anyway, yes. Yeah, but I think she's brilliant, so. That's my, that's my social commentary today. Oh, Faye. Back to one of Faye. Faye had a problem with a serious discussion about whether or not The Walking Dead was racist. So she said, we don't like serious stuff. And I said, well, you know, sometimes we're going to talk about that stuff because, as I said in the first episode, you know, the thing I like about cooking and entertaining is that it brings a warmth to life and uh, it, sometimes you can talk about things in a different way. And so sometimes we'll talk about stuff. So the social commentary for today is, you know, Ha! To the haters of Lady Gaga. <laughs> so, of course, that wasn't very nice, but you know, I was just kidding. There we go. Cook's prerogative. The best part about cooking is snacking. I found a few mushrooms in the fridge, so. So, how do you wash a mushroom? How do you with water? For those of you who are, playing, who are playing the Just a Guy Cooking drinking game, I would consider that a smackdown. So, what? You don't know about the Just a Guy Cooking drinking game? You need to like my Facebook page. Dean and I watch these playbacks, and he'll ask a question, and I, I feel like I'm a little short with him sometimes. He'll ask a question, I'll say no. Or he'll say something, and I'll just say the opposite. Or, he starts making noises, it sounds like he's touching more than the camera when the food starts looking really good. So we developed this little game where every time I say no to Dean or smack him down, you take a drink. And every time he makes one of those noises that sound really good, you take a drink. So you can watch Just a Guy Cooking with your friends and have a party. So we got a whole bunch of stuff in here. And like I said, do what you want. I had a shallot here, but I could also put green onions in, so I'm not going to put green onions and shallots in here. Change my mind as I go. So, anyway, I'm kind of all over the place today, aren't I? But that's what I was going to say uh, earlier, I just remember what I was going to say. Um, one of the things I like about cooking and having people around while I'm working in the kitchen is you get to talk and you get to chat and you get to have fun. And I think cooking should be fun. I think a lot of things should be a lot more fun than they are. They don't have to always be work. Drudge. Drudgery. The drudgery of life. So anyway, oh, I forgot to get a rag. So I didn't clean that up. So, all right. So uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and then we'll be right back. I'm going to make a very special dressing to go with the salad. See you in a bit. All right, so the first 10 minutes are done with the uh, prosciutto. So let me check it and see what I think it looks like. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's perfect. Let's see. Let me turn this off really quickly. 
You see that? See how crispy it looks? Oh. It's basically really fancy bacon. Mm. And there ain't good. nothing wrong with fancy bacon. So, let me set it over here, let it cool for a little bit. <laughs> You're such a tease. I am a tease. Well, it's too hot. It's too hot right now. And plus, we've got to make our dressing. Sounds like a song to me. So let me... It's too hot, too hot. Oh, you got me to sing. Too darn hot. Oh, oh, you want to go? Oh, you're gonna be real gay, huh? Go to Ann Milner. Okay, we can do that. We can be that gay. Faye, I got a measuring spoon. So, I promise I won't be doing this down every episode, but I'm just having a little fun with it right now. I didn't take the time to read the whole email. She wrote a very nice email, and I really appreciated it. So, very supportive. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make just a little bit of a dressing, and um, what I have here, this pink glob thing. It's actually a French mustard. It's a black currant Dijon mustard. Several years ago, someone bought uh, a gift, bought a gift for me that was several different little French mustards, and they were all flavored different things. They were all Dijon mustards, but they had different fruit flavors. And I started using them for different things. So what we're going to do with this, I like the idea of fruit with uh, pork. Pork is a really good uh, uh, meat to mix with fruit. So um, we're going to use this black currant Dijon mustard to make a little dressing. And this is going to be really, really simple. Um, I'm going to take, oh, first of all, this is a regular spoon, not necessarily a measuring spoon. I'm just making enough for us. So I'm just going to take like one Ooh. tablespoon. It's like about two, really. Well, one of these like place setting tablespoons. So it's, it's, oh, okay. it's, 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 it's not, not a real tablespoon. Just, actually that's probably enough, but I'll make a little extra. So. More is better. More is better. So what, this is just my, one of my measurements, a big glob of the mustard. Now, I found this in a specialty shop in, Sol shop in Solvang. I don't really come across these French, fancy French mustards very often. And they aren't really that expensive, but I can't really tell you where to go to get it. Maybe specialty cooking stores, specialty food stores, and of course, Google. You know, I'm sure you can get check it online. You can probably get it on Amazon.com. Um, just look around. Now, what I'm going to do with this, because I want to just thin this out a little bit. Oh, actually, I haven't even tasted it yet. Let me taste it. Right, so. Woo! A little bite? It does. It's spicy. I'll have to put some honey in it, I think. It's spicy and it is, um, but you have this really faint fruity taste to it. It's really nice. It's going to go great with the salad. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a tablespoon at a time of olive oil just to break it down a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whisk it until it has a, not as thick, a, a, a more of a, a dressing consistency. It can be a little thick. Let's add a little more. And I do this because you know this is one of those this is one of those ways where I kind of try and cut back a little bit. You know, I measure out olive oil. Mm. Makes me feel better about life, I suppose. <sighs> That's getting a little better. You should try grapeseed oil. Oh, uh, it doesn't have flavor. But, grapes, it's but it's healthier. Yeah, but there's no flavor. I have I tried grapeseed oil. That, and I've, I think that I've tried the grapeseed. That would be a smackdown. And for those of you who are playing the game, drink! That would be, thank you, Dean. That would be, a, and Dean doesn't drink, but he's helping all of you have a really good time. So, um, he's living vicariously through you. Yay. So, and this, this time it's only about a half of a tablespoon. So, so far I've used a big glop of dressing. And this is one of the things you just do a little at a time. So that keeps you from ruining it. No, the thing about the grapeseed oil, I have tried, I tried to, I tried to be healthier once. <laughs> So I did half, I did like the grapeseed olive oil blend and I noticed a huge difference in how my food tastes and it was, it needed more salt and needed more seed, it just didn't have any flavor. So I'd rather use olive oil, get a little more flavor, because olive oil is a better oil than, you know, other kinds. 
I think I like that. See how that is right there? It's still thick, yes. but it's got a little bit of movement to it. I like that because it's going to cling to the vegetables. So um, let me taste that. Well, it actually is nice. It smoothed out the bite for the Dijon mustard. But there's still, now this is how I cook. This is just a guy cooking right here in purest form. I am experimenting. I'm inventing and creating right in front of your very eyes. So what it's done, it smoothed out the bite from the Dijon. Um, there's just this really faint, faint fruit flavor. It also killed a little bit of the fruit flavor, I'll be honest. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of this in here. And this fay is how come I don't be, I'm not able to give you measurements usually. <laughs> Because it really is, it's just experimenting and playing. And you know, maybe you don't want to do this with cooking, but you should do this with something in your life. There should be something in your life that you just play with. You don't worry about doing it perfectly. You don't worry about knowing how to do it or not do it. Just go, just figure it out. <gasps> I know, build it before you read the instructions. That's better, just that. Just adding that little bit more mustard, brought a little bit more of the bite back to it, and um, and now I can taste the fruit again. So um, I don't think I'm putting anything else in it. I think just do that. I am going to do uh, just a little bit of sea salt, and just you know a healthy pinch. That's all. And where did I put my pepper? Right here. And a little bit of pepper. Okay, a lot of pepper. That was probably uh, maybe a half a teaspoon of pepper. Maybe, I don't know. Once again, salt and pepper to taste. Speaking of tasting. That little bit of salt made all the difference in the world because what it did, it just popped all the flavors that were there. Just, it's amazing. Salt, salt, salt. Doesn't have to be a lot, but it always needs to be there. So, let's play. So what we're gonna do, is we got our salad, we've got our dressing, and then I also have some fresh cantaloupe that I cut up, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna play a little bit with our, um, with our, our prosciutto wraps. So let me get some plates out here. Now, like I said, I'm just thinking of this as like an appetizer, not a whole meal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, uh, pardon me, I have to go get a tong. We're going to take the dressing and just put a little bit at a time in. I don't like anything. I like I like my salads tossed because I tend to use less dressing that way. So we're just gonna toss a little bit. It needs more. You know the old saying: you can always add more, but you can't take it away once it's there. So I'm just gonna put it all in. <laughs> and that's how I do the seasonings. Like I I I I um. I've learned that you can use more than you think you can use, use, and most recipes I find don't don't require nearly as much seasoning as I think something. I like to heavily season stuff. So, um, so always start with a little less. And then you want to get everything nice and coated. It adds an interesting color because it has the guy in his pinkish color and then texture because of the Dijon. You know, the mustard seeds in it, it's all, it's very pretty. I think it's very pretty. So we're just going to take a little bit, put it right in the center of the plate. And again, because i got to feed the help. <laughs> Now I'm just trying to make you drink. <laughs> okay. 
I don't think any arms were twisted. Does that not look pretty there? Yeah. Alright, so let's... Okay, this is cooled enough. Let me see. Just loosen them up a little bit. And see how, you know, they were really fragile and now they've all become sort of one piece. Like magic. Alright, so... Now I'm going to, oh that was loud. <laughs> so now I'm just going to, you know, just make a nice little presentation. Oh, you can put two or loud. four, boom, boom, boom. You know, you can do it however you want, boom, two or four. Um, four so, looks better. Four looks better? Yeah. yeah. Okay, there you go. I have to save some for Michael. So uh, we got to make sure we don't eat all these. And then I'm going to do something just for fun. And, um, I forgot to get some toothpicks. I need to get some toothpicks, so I'll be right back. All right, so, I had to get a knife, get a little clean up, because I want to try something. This is experimentation day. You get to see what I enjoy doing, love doing. Fortunately, it turns out pretty good most of the time. So, I want to make sure my knife is really sharp, because I want to make sure, I want to cut these in half, and I want to make sure it's a nice, clean cut. I have no idea if this is going to work. I have no idea if it's going to fall apart or what's going to happen. Let's find out. So what I want to do is I'm going to try and cut this in half. I'm going to be very gentle with the cut to make sure. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Boom. You can see the date. You can see the cheese. And then I'm going to take and do this. Should we should go that way. I think we should go this way. Boom. You're the chef. Yeah, I'm making it up as I go, so, you know. I'm taking a piece of cantaloupe, boom, like that. Oh, shish kebabish. Little shish kebab. Isn't that a nice little appetizer presentation? You can either have, if you wanted to go farther, you could actually just do it like that. And then, it's sort of like, it's just one bite. You know? You know actually, I think I like that even better. I, it depends. I mean, that could be one bite for me. One bite, Dean. <laughs> Drink! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's one bite. <laughs> that is nice. Boom. Yeah. Okay, so let's do a couple more. Because I've got all these here and I've got all this cantaloupe. See, that one got, I didn't, wasn't careful and that one got a little crunchy. So, I'm going to be careful. This is great. This would be great for party trays. And these cantaloupe pieces are really big because I just cut them up this morning. So if you wanted to go, you could half these. Um, because this is that's a lot like a lot of cantaloupe to take in. So if you wanted to like cut them half again just for a small piece, that would be a little bit easier to eat. A little more delicate. Because let's face it, if we really watched each other eat, we'd be a, you know. Some of us eat in a very ugly way. <laughs> just my opinion. So, here you have, today we've got uh, prosciutto wraps, or pig blankets, as opposed to pigs in a blanket. The pig is the blanket for these. A couple different ways. You can serve them just by themselves. This is with a chopped spinach salad with a black currant Dijon uh, dressing. And, um, and here we have uh, them sliced in half, add a piece of cantaloupe on a skewer, and you have a nice little party appetizer. So, uh, thank you so much for being here today. That's what we have. Oh, I haven't tasted it yet, have I? Oh mm -hmm. my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I know it's forgetting something. I have to taste it. I think I'll taste the salad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this. Prosciutto wrap. Or stuffed prosciutto. I think I like prosciutto. I'm, the jury's still out. Go to our Facebook page. Uh, Just a Guy Cooking. And let me know if you like prosciutto wrap or stuffed prosciutto better, what you prefer. So, I've got a little lettuce and celery and dressing and prosciutto wrap. Mm. Mm, oh wow. It's good. There's a whole, whole lot going on in my mouth right now. Sounds kind of dirty. That, well, for once it's not. 
<laughs> this is YouTube, not the other two. <laughs> Start to the next. <laughs> no, oh. it is. I want to. I want to take it away. Because what you have, you have really salt. The the ham is salty. The goat cheese has a little bit of salt. Then all of a sudden you get the sweetness of the date. Then you have this dressing. It's a very light flavor. The dressing is not a very. It doesn't have a very strong flavor once you add all the vegetables to it. So you've got. I mean, you've got just. This is really good. It's very different. Mmm. That black currant is such an interesting flavor, and because it's not a heavy dressing, it's not overpowering. But you really taste like I tasted it, like that time I tasted it right on my tongue when it first started. And it was like, ooh. But then it excuse me while I choke. Hi I'm like anyone? Um no. But then it um it smooths out with the vegetables. And now, I just got that bite of date. So now, oh, so then it got really sweet. Oh my gosh, this is an amazing dish. You need to make this. Let me see what it tastes like with a cantaloupe. I'm so happy. That's all that counts. And this is why we call it just a guy cooking, because I this is, this is how I cook. This is how I cook. I, I make it up as I go, and it's so much fun. Because when it comes out really good, it's just, oh my goodness. It's, it's a little bit of a rush for me. Let's see. Mmm, 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 mmm. <laughs> that is so good. Oh my god, so this is one of those foods that like the more you chew it, the the flavors like change. Sort of sort of like violet and the Willy Wonka the chocolate factor without blowing up like a blueberry. <laughs> um so yeah, that because you have the cold the cold and the juice from the cantaloupe and then because these are still a little bit warm you've got the warm cheese and then the salty from the pork and then the sweetness from the date oh my god both of these are amazing so what you need to do is you need to make them <laughs> you need to take pictures of them and post them on our Facebook page um, let us know what you think and um, and have a great time. This is, this is, I'm very excited how this turned out. So, I'm gonna quit talking about me and the food right now and just thank you once again for watching. And please, 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 please remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on YouTube, uh, leave comments on YouTube, go to our Facebook page, Just A Guy Cooking, uh, like the page, uh, add your comments. If you, want to, if you want to make me cook something, ask me to cook it. I'll figure it out, even if I've never done it before, apparently. Um, I'm getting there, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> so yeah, but uh, let me know what you want to see. Um, in future episodes, I might be bringing some guests on to share some of their things uh, that they like to cook. That'll be fun. And uh, uh, let's make this interactive. And also, as Dean said, you can also tweet us uh, at or follow us on Twitter and tweet about us to your friends at Alex underscore J A G C, just a guy cooking. That again is at Alex underscore J A G C. So until our next episode, we will see you later. Bye.